Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. I hope you're well. Hope you had a great week. Uh, and I'm very glad that you're here. Today, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm calling the end game. The end game being that point at which you are very comfortable with all of the notes within the 16th note subdivision. All of the exercises that we've done have led us to this point. Now, again, as I've said in previous videos, no pressure if you're not here yet. This exercise might be a little bit more advanced, but that's okay. You will get here. Um, so here's the thing. This is an exercise that I talked a little bit about as part of a course that I did for Scott Devine and his website, Scott's Bass Lessons. There are a lot of you here because of Scott. And uh, I don't take that for granted for a second. I owe that man a lot. In fact, uh, give him a little shout in the comments if you're here uh, because you've heard of me through SBL. So what I wanted to talk about today was this exercise that I did as part of the course that I recorded for Scott's Bass Lessons. And it's really going to test your skill and your comfort level with the 16th note subdivision. I love this exercise. I feel like it's a game. Um, and I, ha I have a lot of fun playing this exercise. And I can, you know, I can sit for two hours and just groove on this thing. So here, here's what it is. First, I'll give you a little bit of history, as, as I see it anyway. I feel like the relationship between the bass player and the drummer has changed and evolved over the last few decades. And I think a lot of that has to do with the contribution of hip hop. Because before hip hop came along, it was our role as the bass player to really lock in with what the drummer was doing. The drummer was, was playing a lot of... Uh, sort of foundational patterns, patterns that were uh, locked into beat one and centered around beat one. As that was going on, the snare drum was playing more syncopated patterns. You know, I th I'm thinking of like James Brown grooves and things like that. So then hip hop came along and then flipped that. So what happened was the snare drum just started playing two and four. That became the foundation. And then the bass drum started to play more syncopated patterns. So the way that I approach this now, or at least one of the ways that I approach this now, um, allows for much more of a conversational relationship between the bass player and the drummer. Here's how I do that. If I'm comfortable with the 16th note subdivision and I realize that with these more modern drum grooves, the bass drum is basically going to be improvising while holding down this foundational two and four pattern on the snare drum. Well, here's what I do. I play um, using every note of the 16th note subdivision except two and four. I leave those notes completely open. This is where things can become so much fun because as you become more and more comfortable with the 16th note subdivision, you can really make statements with the phrases that you play. And if I were to take this metaphor further, each statement that you make gets punctuated by the sound of a snare drum, by beat two or beat four. I'll show you what I mean by that. I've got my trusty metronome here, ready to go. This time I've set the metronome to 100 BPM. Um, that's where I left it in the last video, and I had so much fun at that tempo, I think I'm just going to leave it there. So, 100 BPM on the old metronomies. I should give this metronome a name. Help me out. What should I name this metronome? Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments. 100 BPM on the old metronomies. And, of course, beats 1 and 3 are turned off. So now what I'm going to do is just basically have some fun and play the entire 16th note subdivision and leave beats two and four open. I will not play 
those beats, or at least try not to. But every other beat in the subdivision is up for grabs. And again, let's lock this down to like a G minor pentatonic thing. I'll play around G minor pentatonic. I might add, add a note here and there. You might hear an E every once in a while. Um, but for the most part, I'll just play G minor pentatonic. 100 BPM. Let's take it to the bass. One, two, three, four. All right? Feeling good? And now I'll just start to play these phrases off of G minor pentatonic. The exercise. I could have gone on for days just playing that. But here's the thing. We are bass players and I don't want to do that all night on a gig. So what I really want to do is work my way towards a bass line that I can sit on and then have the band just sort of vibe. So I might use the same process where I play around a, a particular harmony. But as I'm playing, uh, I'm keeping track of the phrases that I like and letting go of the phrases that can be thrown away. This way, if I keep those phrases that I like and build and build, I can work my way towards an actual bass line and just stay there and let the band vibe. Because that's our job. It's not my job to sit around and improvise the entire night. It's my job to to be the foundation for the rest of the band. So this is the goal. First part of the exercise was just having fun. Now I want to work towards something that really makes a statement. All right, we try again. Again, 100 BPM on old what's her name over here. And uh, beats one and three turned off. Let's make a bass line. Here we go. <coughs> I'll start simple. One, two, uh. So far, I don't like anything, but I'll keep going. Oh, I like that. Okay, now I'm building something. There it is. That's my bass line. Right? Then I'll just stay there. So as I'm playing that, uh, I'm realizing a couple of things. There is, a, there is an essence, there is a weight that's happening in part of that line that kind of needs to be there. That's what I'm hearing. And that's mainly in the second bar. When I play, I feel like that's the essence of the line. Once I realize that, then the rest of the line gives me a little bit more room to embellish a little bit or explore some different ideas. So if I keep going back to that main theme, that essence, then I can keep that conversation happening with the drummer. I can inspire whoever might be soloing or singing at the time, whoever's taken the sort of lead voice in the band. And everyone can vibe and people keep on dancing. That's the thing. So now I'll do that. The next part of this, this process 
I'll call it an exercise or a process. So the next stage is to maintain the essence of the line, but maybe explore some different ideas around, around that. So we'll do it again. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So first I'll play the line, which is just this, three, four. <laughs> Now I'll play around. And I can go back to the line at any time. So see what's happening there? I'm having a lot of fun, but I'm also being uh, very aware of my musical role in the band. So I'm not overplaying, I'm not trying to step on anybody's to toes, and I'm not trying to um, be the main focus. What I really want to do is serve the music. So everything that I play has a purpose. And you can hear that even when I'm improvising around the line, uh, I'm doing so in a way that is complementary to the essence of the line. So I'm not playing anything um, too far out or I'm not playing anything that gets in the way of that essence, that, that back end of the line. I hope that all makes sense. My friends, I think I'm going to leave it there for this week. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to The Brownstone. I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos, and I hope that you are gaining something and... Uh, and I hope these videos help you to become the best musicians that you can be. Uh, as I say in every video and as everyone says in all of their videos, please give a like, share this with everybody, subscribe to the channel. Um, and of course, I will leave a link in the description box if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel. It's a bit of a shorter lesson today, but I hope You've learned something. And above all, above all, I hope you have fun with these exercises. All of these videos, all the videos that we've talked about um, over the last few weeks, have fun with them. And don't let them get you down. If you feel like you're not progressing at a rate uh, that you should be, don't let it get you down. Because chances are you are progressing without even knowing it. So keep at it. Don't stop. And, uh, and it won't be long until you're creating bass lines that make people dance. I'm going to leave it there, y'all. Thank you for stopping by the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Peace and love.